بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so now the next concept we'll try to understand uh, there is something called dhcp relay agent now this is typically used when the dhcp server is on one subnet like take an example in our lab scenarios what we did we configured this as a dhcp server which is responsible for providing the ip address to the clients so it's uh, assigning the ip address to the vlan 10 and the vlan 20 and also we have configured this is assigning the ip address to the other remote client as well we created three different pools and if you just wanted to quickly verify i can even show you the configurations here where i can go and give the command called show run section dscp where we have configured the pool for vlan 10 vlan 20 and for the van interface so this is going to work fine as long as the client and the dscp server so this is the dscp server and this is the client as long as they are connected to each other in the same subnet that's really good but now the problem is what if i want to use the same dscp server like in this example i want to use the same dscp server which is in my head office let's assume this is my head office which is assigning the ip address to these devices the vlans and the same dscp server i want to assign the ip address to the remote lan also now this is the remote lan which is not on the same subnet now you have a client in a remote branch office let's say this is my branch office one and i want the head office to be uh, able to provide the ip address to the to the client on the remote subnet now if you just want, you can just check it out. So what I'll do is I'll try to set up. Anyway, I'll, I'll directly show you the. it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work because the limitation, because of the limitations. So if you remember, let's, let's try to understand some of the limitations with DHCP across multiple subnets. And of course, the solution is the DHCP relay agent or IP helper address. So one of the main limitation is the broadcast limitation. So if you take an example, this is my company network and I have the DHCP server somewhere here. Let's assume that I'm going to maintain one DHCP server here, somewhere here, okay? Now this DHCP server will be able to assign the IP address to everyone within the same subnet. That's good. But I want the same DHCP server will also be assigning the IP address to this LAN uh, as well as this LAN as well as this LAN, as well as you have many VLANs here. You can see there is a VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, VLAN 40 as well. Now, what will happen whenever a client sends a broadcast, like if you take a, this simple example, okay, this is going to be much easier to understand as it is a very small topology. Now, whenever this client says, I want to get the IP from the DACP server, we know that it will send out a broadcast request. So what it will do, it will go, it will send a broadcast request. So the broadcast request goes to every device within the LAN, including this router. So normally, whenever a client sends a broadcast request, I'm expecting this broadcast request should reach the DHCP server or the DHCP server should listen to the broadcast request. Then only it will be able to reply back. But as the DHCP server is on a different subnet, DHCP server is somewhere and the client is somewhere on a different network, the client will send a broadcast. The broadcast goes within the LAN. Within the LAN or within the VLAN, it will never reach the DHCP server because the DHCP server is on a different subnet. Okay. So the main problem is the broadcast limitation is only within the same VLAN or the same LAN as the broadcast request will not go to the, or reach the DHCP server. So this way, it will fail to get the IP address because uh, there is no way you can get the IP unless you send your request to the DHCP server. So other options, what you have to do, you have to either use a manual IPs. That is one option. You can say, okay, I have the DHCP server I'm going to use for this network. Uh, for the remaining network, I'll say a static IP. That is one option. Or you can have a separate DHCP server in each and every uh, LAN. So, Again, these are not uh, practically scalable because uh, having a static IP is not recommended. 
And again, having a separate DSCP for each and every VLAN, each and every LAN is also not scalable. And especially if you have thousands of uh, departments or if you have 20 departments maintaining 20 DSCP servers, it's not really a scalable because managing multiple DSCP servers in each and every network will be uh, very difficult. And it's, uh, you know, uh, considering that, you know, that's really not a good option. So what is the option? We can use a relay agent. So the solution is relay agent. Now the relay agent, what will happen is uh, simple. The client will send out a broadcast request. The router will listen to the broadcast. Request. So the broadcast request uh, will go to everyone. Of course, what I can do is I'll go to this interface, interface F0 by 0. On this interface F0 by 0, I'll simply configure one command, IP helper address, uh, whatever the IP address of the DHCP server. I have to tell the IP, simple thing. So what this means is I'm saying that whenever this interface receives a DHCP broadcast, I can tell my router to forward this broadcast to the DHCP server wherever it is as a unicast. Okay, and of course, the prerequisite you need to have the routing uh, capability at the back end to be able to reach the DSCP server. So, the simple thing the request is coming from the client for the discover message, and the router or the gateway will listen to that message and it will forward this to the DSCP server as a unicast. So, the client will send a broadcast and the router will be sending that as a unicast, assuming you have a routing reachability all those things okay that's the same thing okay uh, similar diagram you can see here also you have the client sends a broadcast request the broadcast it will go to the router and i'm going to configure the helper address which is going to send a dscp unicast request as a unicast request to the dscp server the same thing here okay so what is a dscp relay agent relay agent is an option which is going to use, which is going to forward the broadcast and it's going to support multiple subnets, which means I can just have one DHCP server in the head office and it is assigning the IP address to many branch offices. All the branch offices can get an IP address from one a single DHCP server set up across multiple VLANs or across multiple subnets across multiple branches you can have. Okay, so that's the scalability what it provides. And the main advantage, it will reduce the uh, need of uh, multiple DHCP servers. So we don't need a separate DHCP servers because it is going to work uh, for multiple uh, networks. And this way we can have a scalable network. You can have hundreds of departments. You can still have one DHCP server doing the job. Of course, it will impact, it will reduce the cost as well because we are not uh, maintaining a separate DHCP server again. Uh, so what it is going to do, it's going to forward the broadcast request. So let's try to uh, implement the same uh, lab here as per this topology, okay, the continuation we can say. So I'm going to use this continuation topology here, which is going to use so already it is pre-configured with these two subnets and also these are the clients which are getting the IP address from the DHCP server. And I'm expecting the same to be done for the remote network as well. So for this device, for this client. And this client is using 192.168.1. subnet. That's a subnet. So before that, we need to do some uh, few configurations. The first thing is the interface you need to have the static ip so this interface must have a static ip so in order to do that so we'll go back to my topology which is already connected here i already connected these devices i'll go to this router we'll start from the right side part okay so the pc client we don't need to do anything so the router part we do have the interface f0 by 0 i'm going to assign the gateway address as 1.100 and the uh, on the same interface, I'm going to say relay uh, helper address, okay? So I need to, if you want, I can just simply configure this. What is the IP address of the DHCP server? 10.002. 10 
So on the same interface, I'm giving the IP and also I'm going to say interface F0 by 0 IP helper address. And I have to give the IP address of the DHCP server. So this is going to be my DHCP server IP, uh, which means this is my DHCP server and this is the IP address of the DHCP server. Okay. But again, the question is, in order to send the unicast, that DHCP server IP should be reachable. So if it is reachable, it can uh, send. But now the question is, not just this device, this device, this network also should be reachable. So, so basically, you have to implement the routing as well between these two. Or you can create the pool. The other thing, you need to create the pool as well. So what generally we do is, most likely you you will not have the same network so we'll also do the routing we'll advertise like the one dot network in the lan and we also advertise the 10 dot network in the van on the router so also what we have to do we have to implement the routing protocol because if the the client and the dscp if they're on different subnet there must be a routing also configured and that's what we are doing additionally I have to go to the L3 switch or the DSCP server. Also, we have to configure the routing. So I'm using EHRG. You can also use any other. So make sure that in the L3 switches, by default, the routing is disabled. So we have to give the command called IP routing before we enable the routing and advertise the protocol. You can use OSP or we can use static or you can use any of the routing. It's up to you. The 10 dot network and advertising the LAN. LAN is not required, but generally we do it for the routing purpose. Now we do have the routing as well. So which means now the routing is also configured. Now, once we do the configuration, we need to create a pool. Also, it's required. So we need to go to the switch, create a pool for the remote network. IP DSCP pool. This is for LAN 2. Let's say 172.16.1. subnet. 255.255.255.0. The default router, uh, the default router is 172.16.1.100. So we have to give the default router based on this subnet. This is my default gateway here, and this is my client. And assuming that there is a DNS server as well on 1.1, and I'm going to exclude uh, 172.16.1.1 because that is my DSCP server, uh, sorry, DNS server, and 1.100 is mine is my gateway and if you have any other exclusions you can just add i'm going to randomly exclude 17216 1.20 as well okay up to 20 uh, which means i'm expecting the ips should be given from 21 22 like that i think i'm done with the configuration so just to quickly review this client will be getting the ip dynamically you must have a static ip here and on this interface you must configure the helper command which is a dhcp relay agent command so it will receive this interface receives the DSCP broadcast. It is going to send out a unicast to that. Now to send the unicast again, the routing is required. So we enable the routing. And the other thing, uh, when the DSCP server receives the request, it has to have the pool. So we also created the pool and we excluded the addresses. So if you see the process uh, accordingly, you can go step by step and configure, or you can just make your own steps to configure. So most likely, I assume I'm done with the configuration. So it's time to verify. So there are many clients here. I have four computers. Any one will be sufficient for me to verify. If everything is OK, I must be getting the IP. You can see I'm getting an IP 1.21 here. Let's do the same thing on the other devices as well. 1.22 and the same thing 1.23. So all the devices getting the IP and I can go to the switch and I can just go and say show IP DSCP bindings. So now we can see these are the three devices which gets the IP address, uh, gets the IP address based on the subnet because now the DSCP server is configured with uh, many things like, like again, this is more kind of a production network because if you are making, if you have multiple LANs, you will have multiple pools like 10, 20, WAN, and the remote LAN. So there are total four, one, two, three, and four, okay? Now you can have even more as well. And even you can add, if you want, you can just elaborate this topology a little bit more 
and you can add one more router and you can add some computers and you can do the same thing here as well here also you can do the same thing same configuration so maybe 1.0.16.2.0 network or some other network you can just try and elaborate and you can expand your topology and verify that's how you expertise okay so relay agent is uh, one of the important concept you need to understand because most of the time in the production network uh, mostly the DHCP, maybe you have a dedicated DHCP server, which is running a Windows machine, but still it's your job to configure this config because this is done on the router or on the multi-layer switch, wherever it is. So instead of, uh, let's say if it is a multi-layer switch, let's say instead of this, then you have to configure the same command on the interface, VLAN interface, because that is going to be my SVI. So interface VLAN 10, if you have multiple VLANs, so you have to add this command for the same thing on the VLAN 20 also. So you just need to try and elaborate and do the things. So you need to uh, simulate a few scenarios and we need to do the same way, okay? So here, just for the variation, I have added the router. You can add multi-layer switch and you can just go ahead and verify the same thing here. 